What's the word, y'all? We are back with a recap, man. We got three games to talk about because yesterday we had a playoff game. I don't really have much to say about Milwaukee versus Brooklyn, so I'll tag it on to the end of this one. Um, but we just found out that James Harden is out for game number two. Turn off injuries, please. It is just messing up this whole thing. But I mean, based on game one, it seems like they may not need him. We'll talk about that a little bit later. I want to talk about the game that is fresh in my mind. That is the Clippers getting the win and game seven against the Dallas Mavericks. Te technically, come back. You know what I'm saying? They were down 3-2. They went to Dallas, got a win, and they came home. They got to win the first road team to get a win, and it was it was Kawhi. <laughs> this man Kawhi put on a master class of being able to um, take over games, shoot efficiently, play make Kawhi Leonard the playmaker, and guard your team's best player. It is kind of insane. Like I'm, I'm going to go back to our last episode when you were talking about when the Lakers got eliminated. How I said in that that we didn't have that takeover LeBron, I'm not going home moment that you want from not just LeBron, but from like any star player on the team. Face the elimination, you want them to be like, give me, give me the ball, I'm going to go get a basket. Kawhi Leonard did that in game number six. I wanted to do a whole episode of game number six about that. Kawhi Leonard did that in game number six. He got to his spots and he completely took over, said I'm not going home. And then in game seven, he may not have had the most, um, he didn't have the dominant off Offensive performance as he did in game number six. He shot 10 for 15. He almost had a triple double. I know triple doubles ain't the same as what they used to be. You know, Russell Westbrook has done it four out of five years. Luka Doncic is putting up triple doubles. Triple doubles are not easy to get, but um, easier to get than maybe ever before. But Kawhi Leonard, a guy that's not really known for his playmaking, to be one assist away on a triple double in a game seven while also shooting 10 for 15 and also guarding Luka Doncic is incredible, right? Um, and we're going to talk about this a little bit when we talk about the Trey Young versus Philly game. People always question, like, man, you, you like, in this case, right, Ben Simmons is a top three defense player to your candidate. But in the first half against Trey Young, he didn't get the assignment. You're like, why? This guy can guard one through five. Why do we not have Ben Simmons on Trey Young? What we found out is I guess it don't really matter too much because Ben Simmons got switched on to Trey. And I think he picked up two really, really quick fouls. And I think Trey Young may be just a little bit too quick for him. But either way, when you have a guy like Kawhi Leonard, like Ben Simmons to an extent, that is doing so much on the offensive side of the ball. And yes, I'm saying Ben Simmons is doing a lot on offense. I know he's not jump shooting. He may not be scoring a ton. He's doing a lot on the offensive side of the ball. It's hard to ask a player, hey, Drop 40 for us and also guard Luka. Please, pretty please. That's the only chance we got. Kawhi's a robot. <laughs> Kawhi's a robot. He literally did that. He dropped 40-something points while guarding Luka Doncic. And, and you know, I'm giving a lot of credit to Tyron Lue. I've been a critical, um, a guy that's been really critical over Tyron Lue throughout his tenure here, before, when he was in Cleveland. Um, but he made the necessary adjustments to win this series, bro. If he doesn't make the adjustments on on the, the Luka Doncic defense that he did in the second half of some of these games, if he didn't make the adjustments to tell Zubac, you got to sit your butt down because you can't play in this series, and to have the guns to stick to playing ultra small ball where you got a 7-3 and a 7-4 player on the other side, and they got this win. Got this win. I'm excited to see this next series, man. Um, I think the Clippers match up pretty well against Utah. This is going to be Utah's testament. You know what I'm saying? If Utah can get out of this series, I think a lot of people don't believe in Utah as a real contender, contender, even though they were the number one team in the league, uh, historically great three-point shooting team, all of this, all of that. Um, I think I think majority of people will probably pick the Clippers to win this series. I'm not making a prediction. I'm just letting you know what I think majority of people will pick because um, they, they will have the best player in Kawhi Leonard. And what we just saw in the last two games is when it matters the most, Kawhi Leonard can, can up it a little bit. Um, and, but at the end of the day in this game number seven, a lot of this had to do with the others. I know we always talk about the others, and I'm not going to get to the spiel of it, but the others for the, others for the Clippers, this is what we got. Um, Marcus Morris, 23, a series high for him. Not a seven of nine from three, and he hit the dagger to close the game. Uh, Nicholas Batum had been great uh, defensively all series long. You got Reggie Jackson, who had a 20 something game last the other day, and now backs it up with 15 and another dagger type shot. Terrence Mann, who wasn't even getting rotational minutes last season in the playoffs, put up 26 minutes and had 13 points, going right at Boban. And then, like, like Luke Kennard, who didn't even play the first half of the series, making a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Making a lot of money. Hey, he put up 11 and hit a couple big shots as well. And then you look on the other side of things. The others for Luka. Now, Luka did not play an amazing second half. Um, but the others for him didn't really step up. Tim Hardaway Jr. goes down with an injury really, really early on. And I don't know if that was the reason he shot one for nine. But he, he missed some time and it was with his ankle or something like that. Bobby was really solid. Poor Zingas. Poor Zingas, poor Zingas. Doran Finney-Smith had a good game too. He was everyone on the offensive side of the ball. Or offensive rebounding. Poor Zingas. This, this is, whenever a team gets eliminated, my mind immediately thinks about, okay, what does their offseason look like, right? And let's quickly talk about what the, the Dallas Mavericks offseason should look like. Um, because believe it or not, the Dallas Mavericks are not a young team. They have a young star, right? 
And there's value with building a team right now around Luka because you don't have to pay him max money when he he will get max money as soon as he's eligible. Um, so there's value in trying to build a, a contender, a championship team right now. And they thought they did it with the Porzingis trade. Hey, we got this one-two punch. We got the seven-three center that can stretch and also do a little bit of this. He can defend the paint. Um, he hasn't been what you wanted him to be. He hasn't been a two option. If anything, he's been a three option, but you're paying him like the one option. So they have to figure out how you get a second star alongside Luka because there's too many moments in his games, as great as Luka is, and he makes some of the craziest shots I've seen. It's too many moments where he knows that, like, bro, nobody else in this court can create their own shot, so I have to do it all. He needs someone else on his roster to do that. And if I'm not mistaken, the Dallas Mavericks will have a little bit of cap space this offseason. I didn't do too much research, but I feel like they can make the necessary moves to get another guy that can also handle the ball, another guy that can create his own shot for Luka because they need that as soon as possible because you don't want to be paying Luka Doncic his max money that you miss that window. I mean, the Atlanta Hawks are the perfect example of this. We'll get to that game in a second. We're like, Trey Young still on his rookie contract. This offseason, they went spending. Bogdanovich, Gallinari. Um, they had Rondo. They spent on Rondo, Chris Dunn. They had all this money money because their star player their all-star caliber player is making like five million dollars because he's a, he was a lottery pick a few years ago so I, i'm curious to see what they do um the nba is in such a good hands with luca and trey young and donovan mitchell and devin but think about all the players that's had big time moments in this playoffs right now just, they're just all like under 25 26 years old it's crazy um ben simmons joel and beat i'm still counting them as young even though they've been in the, the league for a long time um so congratulations to the clippers for moving on to the next round the Dallas Mavericks have some real big decisions to make. Um, the Josh Richardson trade is looking worse and worse by the day. Six total minutes played in this one and two turnovers. Seth Curry? Seth Curry in this game is a, is a difference maker. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's all I'm really saying. Um, so let's move on to the other game of today because it was a crazy one, man. The Atlanta Hawks come out 50 points and to 20 or something like it was like a, what was the biggest lead? Let me see what the biggest lead of this game was. The biggest lead of the game was 26. I mean, it was a 26 point game at one point, and they almost threw it all away. All that last six minutes was the most intense basketball I've seen in a long time, bro. Because they didn't want it. It seemed like they did not want it. And shout out to Bogey because he hit the shot that mattered the most. And then he came down and hit some free throws when he, he had it, shot a whole free throw in, in the game until this point. Big time over him. But Trey Young in this first half, amazing. Um, second half got a little bit more difficult. They start throwing more coverages. Then you got you got some Ben Simmons minutes. You got some Matisse Stiver. You saw some double teams. They tried to get the ball out of Trey Young's hand, which is a good thing, but not maybe a good thing. Good thing when uh, Bogdanovich is hitting the shots, Kevin Hurt is in the shot, Lou Williams coming to the game. So, like, I love Trey Young because he he's a very capable passer, more than capable passer. So he sees his double team, and he's able to find the man in the split second. But all of that almost went down the tank, bro. All of it. And, and that's why I think this is going to be a good series, bro. I think originally, because on my podcast, they make, they make you pick, hey, what is this series going to? I think I was like Philly in five. I think I may have said Philly in five, but I hope it's not. This game was way better than I expected it to be, honestly. And I think I said Philly in five, barring that uh, Joel Embiid is completely healthy. And then from game number one, it looks like he was. But the type of urgency that Philly played with in that last six minutes, they need to play with that uh, for 40 42 more minutes on top of that six, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, they didn't have that in the first three and a half quarters, and then they put it together. Um, but, I mean, the fact that they got this win, Atlanta got this win without DeAndre Hunter is crazy because uh, Solomon Hill had a couple shots in early on, but after that, it was just like nothing from him, and then they just couldn't get the ball in bounds. They couldn't get the ball up the court, like double T, double T, double T. Matisse is here. Uh, ben Simmons is here. Uh, Seth Curry is here on sometimes, and Joel B being able to just be at the right place at the right time to get so many layups and one layup, layup, layup was crazy, but Atlanta got the win, and that's all that really matters. You know, they say a series doesn't start until a rotate gets a win. The rotate got a win in game number one. Um, Philly side of the ball. If Joel Embiid, this this will happen until the day he retires. Every time this man gets hit, I'm like, I'm like cringing a little bit. I mean, when you hear a partially torn meniscus, in my mind, he's out for a couple months. The fact that this man was able to play today and not only just that, put up 39 and shoot 14 for 15 for the free throw line and almost bring his team back into this game into a victory is amazing. Is amazing. So like people always talk about, man, Joel Embiid can't stay healthy, can't stay healthy. I I, I always try to figure out. Because I've heard people say being healthy and being available is a skill. When a lot of, like, think about Joel Embiid's injuries. Think about them. The injury he had in, in the last game when he got injured against Washington, he went up for a layup and got blocked and landed weird. You know what I'm saying? But then again, this is just me rambling, of course. Um, Derrick Rose changed the whole way he landed after his ACL because he was landing wrong. It was hurting his legs and stuff. So I don't know. Maybe Joel Embiid needs to go to the same kinesthetic um, trainer that... Derrick Rose went to to learn how to land better so everybody ain't grimacing every time he falls. Kevin Durant falls into this is too, too for me now. Um, but Kevin Durant has, 
had had really big falls this playoffs and just got right back up. So I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't be grimacing because he, he don't he don't get injured. Um, I'm excited for game number two. That's all I can really say. I'm excited for game number two. I'm excited to see how they defend uh, Trey Young early on instead of like the covers that they were using. And yeah, excited to see uh, hopefully Ben Simmons shoot more than 30% from the free throw line because at the end of the day, I, I don't know who I was listening to. But they were saying if Ben Simmons can become a 60% free throw shooter, nobody will foul him anymore. Because it's 1.2 points per possession, which is good. Instead of the one point per, point per possession if he's shooting 50%. Well, say he shot 30%. So I would have been hacking Ben, hacking Ben, hacking Ben because he can't hit him. But if this man can get to 60%, you won't get hacking Ben anymore. So let's let's get into the lab. Let's get into the lab. I don't know how you have two stars. Joel Embiid being the same size, bigger than you. And he should shoot so effectively. And you can't, you know what I'm saying? I, I would hope that they like... In the gym together, at least a little bit, but I mean, I don't know. Um, last game, we want to talk about last night. Let's talk about Milwaukee and Brooklyn. James Harden going down, injury hurts um, for me. I mean, as a fan, as a, a fan that is viewing this. But at the end of the day, it didn't matter too much because Blake Griffin stepped up. Um, um, the guy that was playing overseas, you know, they always got to say that. Mike James uh, stepped up amazingly. 30 minutes for Mike James in the playoff game is kind of it's kind of crazy. He did that, though. Uh, Bruce Brown, big time minutes. Um, this was not a Kyrie Irving game who had 25. This is not even a Kevin Durant game who had 29. This was a Joe Harris. This was a Blake Griffin, and this was a Mike James game, um, which is crazy. Now I don't want. I'm not overreacting to this because at the end of the day, um, a team that is one of the greater three-point shooter teams in the league shot three for 30 from three. Chris Middleton ended with what? 13 total points with 23 shots. I don't expect that to happen too much. But this is. But this is something. That I've said before, when I was thinking about the Lakers, like, man, the Lakers ain't about to shoot 25% of the whole city. They almost did. <laughs> Whatever it is, you got to correct it immediately. And I feel like a broken record when I'm talking about the Bucs and I'm talking about Coach Bud. And, and I thought this, this track record had ended because in the first series, it seemed like he was playing Giannis all these minutes. He was playing um, uh, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday all these minutes. And then in game number one, uh, you don't even play Giannis 40 minutes? I don't understand that. Like, yes, the, the Brooklyn Nets had this game, like, pretty convincingly. But it was never completely, completely over. So we need Giannis to be on the court more, especially if his supporting cast ain't doing nothing. He's the only one that's keeping you in the game right now. I don't ex I don't expect Brent Forbes to shoot one for five. I don't expect Drew Holiday to shoot two for, two for seven. Chris Middleton to 0 for five. I don't expect them to shoot this bad from three again. And that's, like, that's what they're going to have to do to have a chance in this series. Because if they don't hit their shots, here, here's me, big brain. If they don't hit their shots, they can't win. That's the, that was big brain. Um, that's all we want to say. 43 seconds in. Killed my parlay, by the way. <laughs> I had James Harden going off for 30. Barely got 30 seconds played. You know, 